If there was one superpower I wish I had, it would be to tell the future. At a young age, I was fascinated with prophecies, palm readings, and even fortune cookies. Just having the slightest glimpse about the future would change so much about how you live your life. Even barring the ability to cheat at the lottery, it would just be nice to know what's wrong with your computer before you spend $200 only to find out was a solid state drive or find out if your friend was going to get you bronchitis even though he said he wasn't contagious. You know who you are. But I'm not a fortune teller. I'm just a guy who analyzes games on YouTube. There's no way I can tell the future. But that might not be as a big of a restriction as I initially thought. Video games have been able to do many things that many years ago we didn't even think was possible. We're able to live hundreds of lives and explore worlds and stories we'd never be able to experience otherwise. Back then it would have been considered nothing short of magical. Yet today it's so common we tend to forget how astonishing of a feat that really is. It's going to space! Can you give it a second to get back from space? So, who's to say that games haven't figured out how to divine the future already? In fact, one game released nearly 30 years ago claims it already can. Welcome to Design Documentaries. All that has been, and all that will be, is here for you to know. Dare you glimpse the future? Dare you even ask? Taboo! The Time Machine on Nintendo! Taboo was released in 1988 and published by Trade West, and could easily be considered a Rare game. And I don't mean that in the sense that it was developed by Rare, the same company that would go on to make Goldeneye and Banjo-Kazooie. Yes, before Rare was known for Donkey Kong Country, they were making all sorts of strange games like Anticipation or Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I also don't mean that it's Rare in the sense that it's incredibly hard to find a copy. In fact, I managed to get my copy for about 8 bucks, and that is actually kind of rare. Taboo is rare in the sense that it's one of the few early console games that could be considered not a game at all. Not in the sense of how people disparagingly call Gone Home not a game. I mean, Taboo literally has no gameplay, no way to win or lose, and no real way to influence your outcome. The instruction manual itself clearly states, almost pridefully, that Taboo is not a game. Instead, Taboo The Sixth Sense joins the ranks of games like Colored Dinosaur as being more of a program or activity rather than an actual game. Though programs like these were more common with personal computers during that time, very rarely would a console release be something other than a game. It was marketed as a social experience, an activity that you can do with friends and family at get-togethers. And it was absolutely not for children under the age of 14. That's... weird. Was Rare really worried about Taboo causing a moral panic? Well, maybe. It's because the game somehow managed to completely circumnavigate Nintendo's censorship laws. Not only is the devil in this game by name, which completely bypassed Nintendo's rules on religious references, but there's actual nudity in the game. Like, you can't even question it. Those are just straight up breasts in an NES game. Boobs. Snuggle puppies. Chubby chest cheeks. Jesse and James from Team Rocket. Windjammers. In all seriousness though, Rare attempted at an entirely faithful tarot card simulation. Despite being sold as a game for purely curiosity purposes, The Sixth Sense takes a lot of time and effort to explain the history of tarot, what each of the positions mean, the different arcanas, and many other aspects. The game itself proclaims that it incorporates all of the symbolic references and traditions to make this just as authentic as a real tarot reading. This amount of respect for the medi- <laughs> medium. 
is what made Taboo the Sixth Sense such an interesting specimen. During a time when games were treated as no more than children's toys, there was nothing tongue-in-cheek about Taboo's presentation. Whether this was just clever marketing or if the developers were really serious could be debated. But regardless, it's still pretty impressive and pulls Taboo out of the realm of just a novelty. But despite all this, the question remains, can Taboo really tell the future? I mean, most Nintendo games can barely make a solid connection with the 72-pin connector, let alone make a connection with the Divine. But I guess there's only one way to find out. Getting your reading in Taboo is an incredibly simple process. You ask a question, preferably a yes or no, and the game uses the tarot cards to divine your future. All you have to do is write your name, your birthday, your gender, and finally your question. So in these uncertain times, where any minor misstep could spell disaster or ruin, the door of infinite possibilities revealing to me from wisdom beyond. What future do I glimpse? What question dare I ask the time machine on Nintendo? Do I ask if I will be successful? Will I be famous? No. If I can only ask Taboo one question, then it must be. Taboo, I come seeking answers. And there's one thing I must know. Does the girl I like like me back? Then the cards are shuffled. Supposedly this is the only area where you have influence over your destiny, where you can press the D-pad in a certain directions to change the shuffle. But from my experience, me trying to influence fate doesn't really feel like I'm accomplishing anything an analogy of my life if I've ever heard one. The game then draws a card that represents you, in which case I'm the Knight of Stabs. Unfortunately, Taboo itself doesn't tell you the significance of this representation, but the game came with a poster that can share some insight. Apparently, the Knight of Stabs represents a journey into the unknown, and... Yeah, I can see that, because if I'm honest, I have no idea what I'm doing. The game lays the cards based on a Celtic cross, a 10 card formation that covers the past, present, future, internal, and external- What was that? Taboo, why- why was that a skull? Uh, anyway. Our first card is the Significator, or the circumstances the questioner finds themselves in. The game reveals that card to you and interprets its meaning. In this instance, I drew the world. Determining right now I'm experiencing a triumph and capability in undertakings. And that seems about right. I've been really surprised with the success of my channel over the past year and that's something I've been working on. I've also recently fixed my computer and overall I feel accomplished. That's a pretty lucky guess for Taboo. The second card is the crossing card, or otherwise any current influences that might be working with or against me. Taboo reveals the Knight of Coins, determining that I'm having trouble finishing a laborious task. Oh, once again, that's eerily accurate. I have a lot of half-finished projects, especially now considering I've been falling so far behind with sickness and computer issues. Next up, the crowning card. In other words, what we can expect if current trends continue. Which Taboo says that my destiny is or is being influenced by possible victories. And once again, that makes sense. If it wasn't for the channel and its success, this person might not even have known I existed, because that's how we were introduced. <sighs> Jeez, if I wasn't so accustomed to this game by now, I'd be really creeped out about how uncanny these answers are. The fourth card is the base of the matter, revealing the Emperor. The base card is influences from the distant past, possibly an event that happened long ago that brought me to where I am today. Taboo is saying this has something to do with a masculine influence. And this is where I'm stumped. I'm not sure if there's anything regarding my past where a male figure had anything to do with the person I'm interested in. Rather than dwelling too much on it, let's just move on. The next card is recent past influences, which is pretty self-explanatory. It shows the Ten of Cups, which can be interpreted as a lasting success. Again, this is hard to determine. 
Taboo might be slipping on how accurate its interpretations are, but it could also be something I'm simply not realizing. The next card is Forthcoming Influences, and this is where we start to get a glimpse at the future. Taboo determines that an experienced and capable leader is going to have an effect on the question at hand. Interesting, but considering this is about the future, it's hard to determine what exactly this can mean. A mentor? Possibly a matchmaker? Someone offering advice? When we get to the seventh card, we finally start getting into the meat of the tarot reading. The personal revelations. The first of which is being where one finds themselves. Or, in other words, how do I feel about the situation? The Empress is revealed and... Okay, holy crap, that is really creepy. I mean, it's fairly obvious by my question that I have a wish that will come into development or fruition. But I highly doubt that the NES is capable of cold reading based on my question. As far as I know, all of this is randomly determined and... Getting this is... Unsettling to say the least. The eighth card is environmental factors, or how others view me in my current situation. The King of Swords is revealed and Taboo tells me I'm viewed by others as an authority and proficient in my field. Well, Taboo, that's actually really nice of you to say. I mean, you the viewers can answer this question better than I can, but the amount of comments I receive alone has been really humbling. The ninth card is our hopes and fears. The way the instruction book states that this card represents our inner feelings, desires, and dreads, and how we would or would not like the situation to end or be fulfilled. It can be pretty broad, but the Ace of Staffs tells us that Finally, we have the final outcome, the answer that we've been waiting for. Up until this point, Taboo has been giving us clues, information that we can use to interpret the final answer to our question. We reveal the Queen of Staves, our solution ending with a sympathetic, caring, and loving person. Nope, I'm done. This game has officially gotten too spooky for me. I'm out. You can finish the design documentary yourself. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. So that settles it. Taboo is all-knowing. I am sorry for ever doubting your power. It truly is the time machine on Nintendo. This is Soberdorf going to spend the rest of his money on lottery tickets. See it? Actually, not quite. While I'm at Taboo is giving answers that have made me uncomfortable with how uncanny they can be, at the risk of taking a dump on a major cultural tradition, the truth is that is what tarot is designed to do. While Taboo is doing a lot of the work in dealing and shuffling and giving us the interpretation of the cards, these interpretations are just vague enough that it lends itself to the viewer's own interpretation. When Taboo revealed the card, I immediately started thinking about how the card related to me and how its meaning applied in my life. I'm actively seeking a pattern. Having so few details allowed me to jump to very specific conclusions about what I felt the game knew about me. This is a technique that many great writers use to add a sense of personal interpretation and complexity to the story without having to do much at all. In a way, we still see this in games today. Games like Hands of Fate or the card game Once Upon a Time use this interpretation as a gameplay mechanic of sorts. You see the events and the key points, but it's up to you to put the narrative together in your head. If you're willing to make some broad leaps, games like Dark Souls with its minimalist, highly visual storytelling is a lot like the interpretations of Tarot, allowing the player to come up with their own conclusions and meanings as opposed to telling them outright. This gives Taboo far more power than it actually has. If these interpretations were any more specific, then there would be a greater chance that the person wouldn't be able to relate to it. Don't get me wrong. The fact that Taboo can get incredibly uncanny with its interpretations can be unnerving and sometimes... shocking. But that speaks to how well Taro is at creating these narratives. While this is great if you're writing a very personal, interpretive narrative, 
it's probably not so great at determining the actual future. So is that all there is to Taboo? Just some vague do-it-yourself prophecy designed to trick people but provides no actual value? Was it just to get my hopes up but not leave me with anything conclusive? Well, I'm not entirely convinced of that either. Both game design and storytelling require an understanding of human nature in order for it to be effective. You have to know how a narrative will pull its audience in, or how a gameplay mechanic would feel satisfying to someone playing your game. While Taboo doesn't really offer much in either of those regards, it still uses human nature to accomplish one thing, giving you a glimpse of understanding into the unknown. We don't know what the future holds. We don't know if our Dungeons and Dragons games are gonna go well, or when the next misfortune will strike, or if things will work between you and that person who lives thousands of miles away. And it can be difficult not knowing those answers. Taboo doesn't know those answers either. Tarot isn't meant to tell your fortune or future at all. Instead, it divines the outcome from a source far more reliable, the person asking the question. The narrative that these cards build channels it in a way that it reminds you of the past struggles and successes. And sometimes that's all you need. A reminder that there is a past and a future. A reminder that you've accomplished great things, and you've been challenged by many hardships and that there will be people in your life that have influenced you and many more that will continue to influence you. It keeps you cautious yet hopeful of something that you're unsure of. It alleviates that frustration of not having an answer right now, while giving you the opportunity to change it if you're not satisfied with what you discover. Taboo can inspire action when otherwise there would only be thought, a final determining factor that you needed before making a decision on your own. And it turns out it wasn't some cosmic, unknowable force. The answers were inside you all along. In a way, it makes it even more astounding that the same company who made Battletoads also created a game that could offer such a profound insight. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why Rare took it so seriously as they did. Does that mean Taboo in itself is a great underrated gem overlooked by time? Eh, no. I think the instruction manual is correct when they say the game is really at its best a curious look. But I fully believe it is worth that look. And who knows? Maybe Taboo the Sixth Sense can really pull apart the threads of time and show you the secrets of the future. I guess there's only one way to tell for sure. This is Soberdorf, reminding you that, much like Taboo, future experiences can build character. Now if you'll excuse me, there's one more question I need to ask.
Hey, thank you for watching. If you like this video and like to see more, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you want to help the show grow, please feel free to share this video anywhere you think people will want to see it. Finally, I'd like to thank all the Patreons who made this show possible. If you're interested in supporting the show, please check out patreon.com slash the sober dwarf so your name could be here with all these awesome people. And special thanks to Suki for her generous contribution.